you're not supposed to be the ones getting numbers, but Pontor still managed to perform pretty well. Yeah, I mean, Pontor, especially when you saw him in these sort of late round scenarios, seemed to be quite... Uh, I mean, mechanically, this guy seems like he, he can bail you out of quite a few situations. I, I, I do like him at, from his role, but I do think that there is just kind of this gap in terms of how they actually get and uh, set him up for some of these late round finishes. Anubis is our first map between Elevate and Odic. There are no more lives for either of these teams. It will be elimination or potential progression and continuation within this RMR. But it's already started off hot here for Odic. Straight down middle, Ponter's found Snav and immediately moving forward into Temple. They're actually looking to split into this B-bomb site, and Woody taking a lot of that contact. MBG able to clamber back with one, but that split is just so hard to deal with. Chains left all alone, and there you have it. Pretty much game over already, but maybe he can still pull things together before the bomb is planted. Wanta yet to really commit. He is going for the backside plant. That gives Shane some time to fight this 1v1. Duels being given seems unnecessary. Nighty reconsiders and does duck back out into Temple. Leaves Shane to try and peek into a vertical double peek, and he still finds Natty initially. Wanta, however, can win out the round for them and save the day, but it did feel like... There was some unnecessary risks taken. Audic are going to be sweating a little bit. Yeah, I mean, they knew where that last man was and they could have obviously gone back towards that A-bomb site instead. He was at least keeping them contained slightly. You know, Shane just able to disrupt the, the flow there from, from Audic, but a nice pistol coming out from the South American squad, able to just wrap straight in towards Temple. You saw how awkward it was for those B-site players. But as soon as they cleared out towards B-Main, you know, the round was kind of on. It's a lovely nade to start things off here on the default of Audic against the pistols, but it will be them moving straight into the stack. Ponter leading the way with the SMG. First one comes through, NBG's actually doubled it up with the USB, and now suddenly things become a little bit more scary, they're going to be backing off. Weapons to be recovered, a smoke as well for NBG, and as Turtle continues forward, it's just going to be containment, and he cannot do it, he cannot maintain. Shane, coming through. Odic might have gotten the bomb plant, but it does feel like they're still in deep waters. Elevate. Double AK is recovered, Shane to be traded soon, it's NBG to continue the press forward. The charge of the USB is finished with the MAC-10 finally. Woody able to shut him down in a 1v3 left and it's there to instantly take off his head. Elevate, again, are able to inflict another force by win against Audic. This is exactly how their game versus M80 started as well, a clean pistol into a very, very difficult anti -force. Yeah, it blew up straight in their face as soon as they were moving towards that stack, just getting chewed up inside of A-Main and having to basically turn tail and run and allowing Elevate access to those weapons is just a little too much to handle. That's a, a really, really sad round to lose if you're Audic. This could have been a much better start for them, but like you said, they end up in a situation where, unfortunately for them, it's the exact same kind of start as they had against M80. It's North American squads and winning on secondary rounds. You can't test them. I mean, it's always been a strength for NA sides in general to have those very strong pistols. And there you have it, Dare. Starts off strong, will be backing off as well. Knows that there's someone closing the distance. He even gets the headshot on Nan onto Natty. Upgradable weapon. Woody will be able to pick up that AK-47 and reset and back. Now they've got good util in terms of they've still got a couple of smokes left on the Audic side if they want to try and execute anywhere. But the problem will be flashes again. Hunter's only got the one. If you want to, if you want to try and break onto the B bomb site, there will be a very quick backup to come in with two. So it does feel like going A would be the best shot. But now they're going into a double mid peak from NBG, who is the one. Well, they should really be scared of after that pistol round. After the USB round, rather. Well, he's got some information that there's a player inside of middle. There is utility available here for Odic to continue with this split, but they know that there's presence behind these smokes. And now MBG has backup. They want to try and take the fight straight to Odic. They're running out of time, though. Audic, very, at some point they need to commit and they'll be going into a very difficult situation. Peeping won't be blinded up at all, but somehow Natty just gets a frag completely. 
unaided, unassisted. Turtle, good for another as well, and it feels like the CTs are just falling apart. Elevate, despite getting an early kill from Dare, they're just not able to do anything about it afterwards. Dare's early trade meant that they had to fully focus down on mid, and now Shane, 1v3. A kit in a full belt. And they shouldn't expect him so quickly inside of main, even if they do. Night 8, low HP, the nade could finish him off, but that has to give away his position. Another player is wounded here, Woody walking close, and Shane able to get the instant kill onto Ponter. Woody playing round the smoke, and Shane will pull it through. A one on three for Elevate to maintain after breaking Odic past the pistol. You'd argue, and you'd argue fairly, that Odic shouldn't have lost either one of these rounds, and this is absolutely disastrous, where they were given a lifeline again with that mid-convene that they had. And that mid control was actually really patient from Audic. Yeah. Elevate had the complete mystery because there was such a lack of presence. Pat, once that smoke faded inside of middle, they started to go back towards temple. They thought it would have been uh, a B play instead, a complete reset from Audic. And because they gamble wrong, we saw Peepin get overrun on this A play so quickly. A one on three. What a way to pull through as well for this Elevate squad. And they called straight into a tactical pause. I've had conversations with in-game leaders about this before. Winning a round that you know you shouldn't get away with and calling the tack straight after. This is to let Odic stew in their mistake. Especially when you consider that compounding effect of yesterday where Odic has lost so many similar rounds where they should have been in an advantage. They should, they should, they should. These shooter rounds are the worst to come back and bite you when, in, when you're in a place like the RMR, when you know there's pressure on you and you know there's theoretically two easy matches that you should have had. One was against a team with a coach standing in, the other is against a team with a semi-pro at best standing in, right? So this is where Audic have all of the mental pressure on them to turn things around soon. You're gonna be looking over towards maybe Turtle to make a play, maybe even some set strats to come through, but no, Natty. Just taking control of Dark early on, they're playing it fairly standard, a Canal's focused play. They do want to look like an early b site hit, and that is where the Molotov will be interrupting anyone coming from main, but the real threat lines in Dark. It has to we show that set. presence inside of Dark. Yeah, they start moving themselves back. It will be something that will be quite difficult for Elevate to get a read on, but that's why Shane is pushing round and past that smoke. They've also used basically all of their utility for this. Shane, in the meanwhile, getting a little bit aggressive, but not overextending. You love to see it. He knows there's no one in dark, and that's where they fully abandoned middle out, and they are reinforcing that A bomb site. Shane finds one, right? As I say, there's no one actually getting aggressive. Woody is found out. That timing's perfect. Drops the bomb as well. So the Audit core will have to reset, but instead they're hoping to find a kill on A. It's oh. impossible against peeping. I was worried about that peeping and Ponter matchup, but it feels like there should have been no concerns at all. Yeah, right now, I mean, Peeping had one poor hold, but more than making up for it here. Audic were so split, and even with that bomb being down, didn't show any sort of urgency to re-pick this weapon up. I mean, the re-aggression from Shane couldn't have come at a better moment. Already off to a flying start with that clutch added to his tally, with the kills that he found in the pistol round as well. Eight and two to start things off here for Elevate. And the fact that Audic is saving over here is also kind of concerning when you consider it. They're not going to have money on these two players. Are they just planning on force mining into it one more time? There is basically no reason to do that at this point. Elevate's also got no money to punish, nothing like it. And if you don't force buy, well, say hello to really awkward economical situations in the round after. Audic feel like they're painting themselves into a pretty Pretty annoying corner. Yeah, it can be pretty disastrous. You know, you want to be able to get Woody on an AWP. You want to be able to get full proper rifles out, but the way that this is going to turn out is really unideal, and they're going to buy around what little they save. I this is a I'm not a fan. Yeah, I mean this is a great way for Elevate to sort of continue building on what is already a solid start after losing pistol. They may break Odic very early in this map. And considering that this was the map, which, you know, Michael, you were mentioning that you were expecting maybe this... Uh, I thought this was a punish pick, yeah, basically. Yeah, But the problem is, so far, Audic feel to be punishing themselves more than anyone else. 
Execute on the A site now being planned. Beeping, Molotov forces him away. It's a full napalm strike, and Beeping is blind, taken down before he fires a single bullet. Dare caught out in the open. NBG to fall. Dare does back off, and it feels like maybe this force by still does have some legs on it. Stab though, hoping to cut those legs right off. Molotov goes in deep. Nate to fall up as well. Matt is gonna be naded down, not taken down though. It's Dare to find Turtle Shane to correct that earlier statement and leave Woody alone on the scout. One of these players is within scout shot territory. Now both of them were, but Dare with that fancy footwork and Shane with a really nice ult. Yeah, especially after Shane took some of that attention away. I mean, all credit to them. As soon as that execute came out, got that smoke down straight in front of camera. And as soon as Audit got those two kills, they thought that was it. They thought there would be no quicker response from the remaining Elevate players. But as soon as they let their guard down, Snav and Shane answered back with a couple of frags. And Audic just get picked to pieces. That was a three on five before the, that bomb went down. This is now three rounds out of four that when we've seen from Elevate, where Audic should have won either on economy, <laughs> on man advantages, on bomb plan, on anything. I mean, hell, you even think back to the pistol. That was a 1v3 turn into a 1v1 that Chain almost took away. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty staggering. Right, and especially when you consider the question marks these guys probably had. You know, you, you uh, to, to put it into context for the viewers, when you get done from a BO1 like that, the one they had yesterday, you go back and say, ah, oh, unlucky, RMR nerves, this, that, don't worry about it, guys. We're going to be okay for tomorrow, right? That's sort of the vibe. That vibe's gone. You heard the term, the vibes are immaculate. They are very immaculate right now, actually. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever heard that phrase before, but I'd have to agree with it. God, they're so aggressive down middle. You love to see it. And indeed, he thought he could punish that pick again, but not with the AWP. But his AK will prevail. They're not ready for NBG. He's only good for one. A possibility of a spray transfer will be ignored. Snav, in the meanwhile, Woody might have actually heard him taking a dipping a toe into the water. I think that's the only reason Snav actually started moving back. Yeah. He thought he made a splash sound and they were just in middle, so he didn't want to commit to the canal's peak, but by the time he's turning around, that's when Woody decided to swing. So Onik just breaks them in through middle. And now, you know, even even the, the round prior to this, I was about to praise Onik for going for an execute because if, if this is going to be a map that Elevate don't play that much and are, and are sort of toying with being a permaban between this and Inferno, I believe, you know, there's a, a real possibility that we have this conversation where they're just not going to be well prepped for a lot of these execute heavy strategies. You know, that's where a lot of the, the prep work and a lot of the, the sort of the scrim work can actually lead you to is that teams want to practice their, their executes. And it can be very hard to counteract that if you're the new perma bet. Check down as well. Yeah, but it can be one of those things that you're just kind of ill-prepared mm. for in terms of the right reaction, the right timing. But Elevate have looked good so far in very, when, when dealing with that. Very, very good. Matty is once again getting aggressive down the middle. They're hoping to find Dare. Now, of course, NBG is the one around the corner. But guess what? There's a couple more corners in the middle than maybe they expected. A three-man setup from Elevate. And right now, NBG is the one taking the charge forward. Matios will find it impossible to retreat. It is certain death, and Peeping is the one to deliver it. Meanwhile, Snav back in dark is dodging bullets. He's doing his best Neo impression, but I don't know if he is really the chosen one. Natty's about to reveal that. Oh, Natty doesn't quite commit. Ponder would have been sprayed down with him regardless. Snav, a brilliant hold from Dark will be the undoing of this round for the Audic side. The Brazilians are unsure about how to proceed. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, it feels like Audic are struggling to find a game plan that works in these opening segments. Elevator are punishing and finding multi-kills on a number of their players. This time it's Snav. And this is where maybe this is also the easy prep to do, right? You would expect Anubis to be picked up by them if you're letting go of Nuke in that early banning phase. Maybe a bit more discussion to be had later on. Shane peeks out and he just gets the frag. Turtle's kill from beyond the grave is irrelevant. And Woody wasn't going to be in a great position to link up with this anyway. They were running low on time. But he will save this AWP fifth round for Elevate. 
And it comes off the back of just being able to lock down one of those points of contest, middle, canals, you know, those are usually where the early fights actually begin, especially if the CTs aren't going to be aggressive on one of the extremities. But, I mean, Elevate haven't even explored that option just yet, and Odic are finding some real difficulties taking map control. And the thing is that for Odic, this is a map very unlike what we saw from Ancient yesterday, right? On Ancient, we saw Turtle very much liking to play that mid side of the map, really liking to be involved in that way. Bonder as well on the extremities is able to get a little bit more done. Turtle and Ponta are both playing extremities in this map on Anubis, right? Which is why I did think this was going to be a little bit tricky for Audic to curate properly because that mid presence, that it does feel like it's lacking a lot of the firepower that you traditionally would have in a mid hit the same way. So unfortunately, you're seeing that exploited so many times. Of course, that's not the only way they've lost rounds, don't get me wrong, but Despite mid being their primary focus so far, it doesn't feel like they've been finding the same success without the firepower to back it up. Turtle, he's four and five, but I feel like I've barely ever seen him involved in any fair fights in general. I mean, you see, look, you look at the kills on either side of this, uh, the scoreboard, and it has, it's not like Onik aren't finding frags. You yeah. know, the money on Elevate is not by any means accelerated out of control, even though they found this three round gap. But everything looks co contestable, like Snap to Turtle, Woody to Peeping, and you've got Shane on 12 kills. Yeah, big man Shane. And so important that one of the members of this Elevate core are able to pull the weight of missing out on Dia. Shane seems to be answering that call. Maybe a little too big for his boost <laughs> this round, though. I don't think you want to pick up that phone. It's a good idea, it, what they're going for over there, but Snap of a Hay is the one who actually finds the frag, pushing in through. He knows it's going to be a dark focus play, but he's pulled out the smoke. It is too late to pull out the AK, but Dare gives him that time to continue fighting forward. Snap's just distraction, and Dare is a real threat. Yeah, just messes with the pre-aim there for Audic coming out from dark. Oh my... Okay, never mind. I mean, this is such a tight line for Woody to hold, even if they decide to face check it here on Elevate. Hard shot to hit. I mean, shift walking forward might help, yeah? The bomb is on the A site. They've started to tilt back to B, and with that, NBG realizes that, hey, actually, you know what? I do have a Molotov. Let's just stick around. If there's someone planting the bomb, I can just chuck that one out, try and make a play, make sure the bomb can't go down. But in the meanwhile, the flashbang reveals their intentions. Yeah, it's kind of messed with the rotation, though. It's usually peeping left as this anchor on the site, so NBG doesn't feel that confident to move on forward. They want to try and use that man advantage as Odic just punch in those digits. They've got a flashbang as well, and if NBG can just hold down this first duel, Matthews is gone. Fantastic trades, perfect played. They're able to retake that site with ease and despite the fact that they give it up because of the woody kill. You know what? Elevator happy with it. 6-2. to two. They continue to extend that lead. Now, admittedly, Odic does have a fair bit of... Uh, you know, Odic does have a pretty fair bit of um, money because they do continue to find these bomb plants. They do continue to find these very close rounds, but it doesn't feel like they're ever able to close. And I mean, just look at their faces as well. They don't look like particularly happy campers. Well, I mean, part of that's probably that same conversation you were having earlier. You know, the teams that they're mm. playing are not fighting at full force. These yeah. are not their full rosters. And they've had their issues, you know, losing to some of these low buys. I'm sure they're, they're, there might even be this lingering feeling of, listen, we won some of those rounds. We'd be ahead right now. We'd be yeah. up. But, I mean, they decided they wanted to go with a map that was had very little tape for the Elevate squad, especially with, I mean, with NBG, there's basically no tape whatsoever. And they thought they could just come in and play their own game. And right now, Elevate are very clued into it. Uh, I think the fact that the the Vita went the way that it did and le they left Anubis sort of hanging out there in the open, uh, Elevate said, I dare you, pick mm -hmm. it. Now you have to really appreciate Snav's mindset going into the... Of course, Elevate's one of the only teams without actually a coach in this RMR as well, I do believe. Oh, deep made, would he? That all actually moved past. I'm just bad at looking at x-rays, apparently. I'm not a doctor, Michael. I'm just a Counter-Strike caster. Mm. Where else would you be looking at x-rays? Airport security, maybe. Mm. 
Bonder, though, might need some security. He's going in first, and he's really hoping to find a quick frag, but there won't be any trades. Dare's taken down. Matty as well, closing the distance. They're trying to scale up the stairs, but NBG's in fact taking duels with Pillar, not with close by. Peeping might be unknown though. Another 3v5. They cannot give this one up. And as Audic will have the smoke fade, they do lose one, but trades are good. Matthios is the one with the bomb though. And Turtle in the meanwhile caught out. Shane finding that frag does open things up, but the problem is Snav is nowhere to be seen. Elevate will have to save. Oh my goodness, that would have been a timing as well. Snav had just held up slightly. Would he have reinvestigating in through middle, tried to activate as a late lurk. Just as they plant this in, Audic are still convinced that this would have been an attempt here from Elevate because they brought it back to this in two versus three. And they've been so successful in these retakes, even though they've been down in the numbers. But low resources, low HP, Elevate, bow out. Audic, this time, do not fumble on the A side execute. And as soon as they saw that smoke out at stairs, they didn't rush to get the plant in. They didn't rush to, as soon as they got an opening set of kills via Matios. Instead, slowed it down, waited for that smoke to fade, and they trade accordingly. They learned a lesson from trying to run it in off with on a lower buy to make it work in a gun round instead. I do at least appreciate the fact that through the timeout, they're able to make a call that, listen, guys, we did get to the fight. Yeah. Right? L like, chill. That's what, it's okay. And that's what I was saying earlier. You know, the approach of going for an execute actually seemed like a very solid and a very reasonable action against this Elevate squad. It's not like they didn't break into the bomb site. It's just, you know, they let their guard down slightly after the fact. It's all they core. Three players, Snav, Shane, Dare, mm. playing together since 2019. A really long time, yeah. They've definitely been around the scene for a while. There's always been mutterings about them, but hopefully this time we can have some good murmurs as well. Yeah, hopefully some positive things yeah. to reflect this roster. Fingers crossed, right? Everyone can turn over a new leaf, especially if it's coming in a book of victory. Now, still victory is far away, but at least this start is a good one. Aggression this time through A will be netting them a quick advantage. One that is lost by Matthias, who is coincidentally peeping through the smoke to take down peeping. Ha ha ha. <laughs> All you get is a smile from me. More than more than I normally do. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Matthias just looks so sharp on some of these entries, so he's really given them a lifeline back into this round. And Ponser's taking a lot of space in through A. So far, not a peep. That man's out of the round anyway. But look at the amount of space. If they get this bomb planted on A and nobody on Elevate's within earshot, I'd actually just wager that they save. This is still really risky, to be honest, because of how long they're waiting and how far forward they're going. If Elevate had been chancing that rotate over of any sort at all, you could have lost, uh, you, you could have actually lost Matthias by now. Now, NBG making a fair bit of noise. Matthias should be ready for this duel coming over his way. If NBG checks his corner, he's got an MP9. He'll have the advantage, and now you're on a 3v2. This is the problem with trying to get so much space and trying to find so many flankers and lurkers in a 3v3 post plant. Advantage is lost. Turtle hasn't revealed himself. Will they be expecting a double heaven setup? Time is running low. They do have kits and Snav's got the first and info on the second. They just gave up the round. Audic, I am wildly concerned. They had so much in their favor. They're terrified. Yeah. Scared to make that next move because they know Elevate are hunting. And you were right, you know, the, the idea of them slowing down for as long as they did. Elevate were starting to piece it all together. And as soon as they find that lingering player inside of Canals, I mean, Audic, basically all they can do is play forward because yeah. A main's been compromised. Those players that came through that camera spoke and there was zero resistance on the bomb site itself. When you're at a deficit like that, someone has to face at some point. Mm. So Snav doing, doing his due diligence and piecing it together. Once he spotted those two, it was done. Now again, you're back to the defaults. No more executes, nothing like it. No more sight ticks, no more mid plays. Just trying to find a pick, just praying. And those prayers aren't being answered. The nade is good, turtle is low, snav is dead. An advantage finally delivered. Not that Audic hasn't had these before. But the reface into dark is the plan. The reface doesn't find a frag, though. Peeping's already down. In the meanwhile, Shane takes the first fight. Will he find a what? second through the smoke? Yes, he does. Turtle, gone. 3v3 attained. Once again, elevate. Bringing back what looks like an impossible situation. The re-smoke is well-timed. But in the meanwhile, the reinforce is coming back to the A side as well. They've noticed, elevate has noticed that Audic 
like to reset in the middle of the round. But this time, the destination is unchanged. One of the great difficulties was going to be recovering this bomb. Marius was finding fights inside of middle, decide to clear out towards canals, but they have to pick up that package even if they really wanted to accelerate towards the B site. Them slowing this roll. There are only three dots. Ignore that, that extra. Odic in a three-on-three, -three, and there are two men ready here on Elevate, but they weren't prepared for Matthias to creep their way out, and it distracts MBG as soon as Shane goes down. Elevate setup gets broken instantly. Odic slowing their roll, but finding their way into a fourth. Provided Dare doesn't pull off any Shane shen shenanigans. He, he's going to go for it, though. That's the thing. You're not going to have a buy in the next round anyway. The AK would be nice to have, but I guess the fact that you have to go back and recover the kit from the back of the bomb site is also a bit of a dissuasion, this so maybe also, not. This is also one of the few maps where the bomb radius doesn't feel like it's so terribly wide that you have to vacate the bomb site so rapidly, so Odic would always be within earshot. They'd be close enough by. Yeah, just looking for a couple of unsuspecting Odic members to have made their way through B main, and that will not be the case. It is pretty nice to see the fact that Audic is able to close out a 3v3 like that after losing the advantage, right? This is where, again, credit out to Woody, because I do feel like that's something that's always been a strength of his, theoretically, which is this mid-round calling and, you know, mid-round rotations. And I remember back when he was on MIBR, we praised their overpass a fair bit for that reason. Some of it does seem like it's backfired at times. It is a double-edged sword, but, you know... It, it, do, it is pretty deadly. Yeah, it can it can work in certain moments, but we've seen it blow up in their face just the same as well. Mm. I think Odic just in general, very free-flowing round, you know, allowing players to hunt for an opening duel, and they found themselves in an advantage. Molotov's going to be forcing Woody out of position. They're planning a double push in through Dark, but that's where Natty's covering it off. Good for one, not the second Dare and Stav in the meanwhile. Pushing their respective areas are able to find the kills needed to turn this back to a 3v3. CTs are very happy with this. The problem is Turtle. He's activated. Yeah, this round didn't go the way Elevate planned. Shane got stuck inside of Dark, just using that flash. And because of that, ended up for a one for one where they were hoping that they could just overwhelm the canal's pressure. And now Odic has started to find kills elsewhere. Start off as a nice idea there for Elevate, but sometimes small things like that can really ha break mm. your initial plan. How much you can do to counteract it when you're just fumbling the peak that you're going for? Well, listen, there you didn't go for it the previous round. Now you've got the full belt. No kit, sure, but and now he and now he has there to you go, go for it. I mean, last problem round of is, the half. Problem is, Turtle is going to be able to find him easily. So the last round's already over. There you have it. Quick shout out to our observer Chev as well for catching that Molotov, showing that setup for the execute. Always really cool to see. Pijel's done. Pijel's made it like a. Killer server team overall. We've had like a million of their best names. It's so cool to see. Yeah, I think about pretty much every observer you know. Yeah. <laughs> and some of the ones I didn't know. There you go. Yeah. Uh, seven to five half in a way where it feels like Odic should be slightly heartbroken though. I mean, I'm, pr I'm sure they're just happy that they finally broke through with a few of these rounds because it's not like they weren't getting close. But yeah. They were just constantly unable to, to close some of these rounds. Elevate did a great job clamoring back into bomb sites, finding multi kills on a number of their players in critical spots. And yeah, Odic will feel a little hard done by, but it could have been worse. They could have immediately keeled over after all the uh, disheartening defeats they faced in that first half. Hopefully, that extra boost to the morale towards the end of the first will allow for an extra level to be hit here on their CT side. They dared to pick into this. Mm. This was supposed to be a punish, yet they trail moving into this pistol. And Bonder is about to be put into some serious question mark position that'll be between him and Matthias to defend this A bomb site. Flashbang to try and peek back out for Bonder is good for one, but the trade is fantastic. Matthias continues to be sharp as a knife's edge. Just incision on incision on incision, surgical with that USB. You snap all alone and with the bomb beeping away in the foreground. It is a deadly background from Matthias with four kills to give him that round. 16 and 8 now across the 
entirety of this yeah, map. Yeah, I really haven't been able to fault much of what Matthias is doing. I mean, a lot of sharp shooting on his fights, found entries on that T side, was actually be one of these players that was going for not only opening fights, but was kind of hunting in those mid-round moments as well. And, I mean, gave Odic a lot of chances to close rounds. Didn't mean that they always did, but he was definitely the man to look out for on, on the side of Elevate, because you knew if he was still alive, you were in for a, a rough time on your fight. Continuing to challenge that deagle is always risky. Also probably worth noting as well that the T side, as much as it is favored on Anubis, if you don't have the repetitions and you don't know, yes. you don't have that extra depth to have these executes, all the spawn smokes, for example, that can actually work pretty heavily against you. The reason it's, it is T sided, it feels like, is that teams have gotten so good at what utility is to be prioritized on the attack. And obviously, as a reminder to everyone who is unaware, we are using the older version of Counter-Strike, so the old spawn smokes and everything are still working, right? We haven't implemented the spawn changes yet so that all the RMRs can be played on the same version. Yeah. But no, you're absolutely right about that, Michael. But at the same time, you would expect that Elevate, this was the obvious map pick from Odic, right? If you're not coming into this with three, four nice, cute gun rounds that you have game planned, that's sort of on you at that point. You know what the map's going to be. So hopefully we do get to see their best and we do get to see the best from Audic as well over here now that they have calmed down and equalized. Well, definitely a lot tighter than maybe even Audic expected when they picked this map. Dare, an opener, moving into this first gun round. 90 floored, and Turtle trying to play close with the XM. Should that smoke fade, I wouldn't exactly favor this fight moving into the canals. Especially if Snav still sticks around as support. But Turtle's not prioritized picking up that M4. Okay, yeah, just making sure, making sure they know that there's a shotgun on the other side of that smoke, so nobody dares walk through it. Double push from Audic. They want to actually phase this smoke and take the fight to elevate. At the same time, Bonter is trying to go for a little bit of information outside there. In the meanwhile, oh. just picked up a big double, traded away shore. But that's where Bonter's MP9 might be opening up the way to the A site. He will not be able to. Well, Beeping won't be able to adjust in time, actually. And Bonter continues oh. to fight forward. He's given it right back. A two on two. And where will they go? In through camera? NPG is low. Do you want to face off versus the MP9 again over here? Give it the chance for a full triple. Bonter feels like it might have been safe, and now NPG is routed through back over to B. It's all a matter of contact. Who takes it first? Matios is caught between two difficult angles, and with 20 seconds left, he needs to just zone in on one, trying to fight away, but the distraction is enough. NBG will recover their opportunity, and Ponter being this low means that unless he gets an instant kill, no, not oh, the shotgun. No. Dropped over by his teammate earlier on, and Ponter with that receives back to the A-side, back to the depths. I don't even blame him. There's like six guns inside <laughs> of Dark, and it just happened to be the XM under his feet, but he knew as soon as he gave up that sound cue, if nobody faced him, it was going to be incredibly trying. I mean, what an effort from Dare to go in with the triple kill, not only finding the entry in the round, but then that double kill towards Dark. If not for Ponter's efforts inside of A main on, on honestly just great timing on the MP9, because Peeping was holding for that push, and then just as he was preparing to actually clear in towards A main, that's when Ponter decided to swing. I mean, even the timing, the fact that NBG is able to walk past camera like that without being spotted, because Ponter checked that literally like half a second, maybe a yeah. second ago. So much that could have gone wrong for either side, but yeah, there's definitely the man wearing the cape right now, the hero of the round. They were shown a glimmer of hope there, Audic, even though they found themselves at a pretty heavy man deficit. But it's snatched away. First gun from Elevate does pull through. And Audic are willing to challenge it towards Dark. They really want to sort push Elevate away from this position, but it's a counter flash. 
on uh, by Snav that just sets Dare up. Now he got full blinded as he came through that smoke. Eleven is completely prepared for that play. They must have seen it in a demo or something like it. Like I said, you knew the map and they've clearly done their homework. Dare now moves forward. Does want to try and exploit Turtle in the bomb site. Fantastic Molotov to push him out of position as well. Bonder's gone, but Turtle's still alive. Woody is the one now coming into Frank. And Turtle's been given the space necessary to perform on this small site. Very nicely done. Yeah, that Molotov did actually seemingly work in that scenario, but I don't think it's actually what they wanted. You know, the... A couple of, I think actually just a patch before the, the more recent one that was released, the geometry around that pillar uh, in, actually used to allow you to smalt off in towards Glyph, which is where Woody was actually positioned. So because the, that geometry has changed slightly... You mean Ninja? Ninja, Glyph, okay. it's, yeah, the, the back of the bombsite with the, the two blocks. Fair, fair. Yeah, the, that Molotov used to be sort of predetermined for there, and it, it seemed like Elevate just didn't get the memo. What's the wrong Nard Out Hair video? But that's something that you would know if you played a lot of the new Yeah, yeah <laughs> fair enough, actually. I didn't know that, I'll be honest. Geometry is never my strongest point, but... Matheos has had a very strong point. So sharp, but only good for the one. Woody now has to come through and step up the A1. Fantastic in this angle, just to be able to continue tapping forward, but the Molotov pushes him away. Disadvantaged is Odic right now with the Tech Nines. If they're able to close distance as well, they're trying to play almost a triple heaven setup. Snav as well will not be without a significant degree of threat. All four players are pushing forward. They want to contain the camera position, but they're just not able to find the frags. Shane, the only one left. He's moving through the smoke and Natty's watching out for as well. Nothing going right there for Elevate despite what looked like a good setup. Yeah, I mean, a low buy, but Turtle was able to get in on that flank so quickly. And as soon as he found that there was nobody challenging towards A main, uh, I mean, the, the read there from Otic is very solid. They were ready to double swing out from camera. They had Turtle as well as another element to, to clear out the site, make sure that there was nobody just inside of the bomb site that could, that could re-challenge them. And even though Snav had an opportunity, it was a bit of a swing and a miss, having an SMG against those rifles, not ideal for the fight. So yeah, Otic able to dodge out on that. I thought for a moment that they could have fallen to another one of these half buys, but it doesn't strike three times. Let's not speak too soon. There's still half buys to come. Oh no, Dare just keeps exploiting them in dark. It feels like every single time he's the one coming out on top of that duel, be it Turtle, be it Natty, be it whoever you want to put there. That's a great little one-two punch between him and Snav. Sp Snav spam the right side and Dare spam the left. Oh my god, he almost got a second as well. Dare's forced off finally. Matthews won't let him continue forward this way, but at the same time, they want to rerun back into mid. Woody exposes himself, smoked off now, but Woody's trying to catch them with a util piece out in their hands. NBG backs off. He doesn't want any of that smoke. Now listen, Woody's quite lonely here and he won't have that fast rotation. Molotov is something they're just gonna cheap off, but he's got them both. Quick little lineup and now back to pillar only to be taken down. Turtle, given the space to come in, but he's only gone down to a quick grave. 3v2 as the advantage regained that second part of that one, two, snap. He is kicking into gear. And they're not feeling too confident about the reapproach into this A bomb site. And they had a Molotov, maybe, maybe a smoke. They would have felt a little bit better about going back for this, but Elevate will succeed in taking that A bomb site. Even though Woody did a great job anchoring and finding those two kills, the fact that Snav was able to get a second on top of finding that trade onto Woody. I mean, that created all the space that was necessary for Elevate to get into forward positions and get comfortable to have that plant in, which is, you know, it's kind of night and day. When Onik were actually able to break into the, the A bomb site, there are a couple times we saw them just slow down so mm. significantly. Hell, even when they were positioned outside of B, they slowed their roll. But Elevate understood immediately what it meant that they found those two kills, that there would be no quick response from Onik. Turtle just had to get a little bit more over here. 
Yeah, it's a little unfortunate for Woody there as well because, you know, he just didn't have the ammo really to fight that third man. Had two bullets left in his M4 and you know, he could have committed to the reload, but... That's the curse of the A1, man. Yeah. You do giveth and taketh away. Molotov forces Madios all the way back. In the meanwhile, Bonter is still maintaining a slightly forward-facing angle. I'm curious about whether they do have some A pushes planned out. That's something we saw Elevate doing to some success. But Bonter has largely been left on an island. And most of the people with boats are on the Elevate side. You know, stylistically, this versus the Ancient we saw out from Odic versus MAD. Odic are not going for those stack calls. They're not going yeah. for a lot of these uh, pushes on the extremities. They're actually just trying to challenge into these sort of high traffic areas like Canals and Dark. And they're not finding a great deal of success. There's done a great job of sort of forcing them away time in, time out. Shane, in the meanwhile... He'll have a timing, he'll have it, but Snap is able to force these players forward. They need to swing out fast. Natty does get a kill from beyond the grave, but instead of Woody being taken down, he's got reinforcements coming in. Turtle's good this time, and he's got Woody as well, but he's not able to find a frag. Woody completely whiffing that MP9 follow-up. Quick flank in from Ponter from Canals. And Mattis is just trying to keep attentions raised on him inside of Temple. But he fires off shots and doesn't actually push forward. Ponter moving past the smoke, but Dare has an angle on it. Ponter able to floor him quick and peeping on low HP. Has to be lightning fast on both these fights. Inside the smoke, they wait for the phase and Matios has been crisp all game long. A 20th frag and a 10th for Odic. It did feel like when Woody doesn't find those frags after being given so much space and having so many teammates distracting for him that it might be game over. But despite that, that Late Lurk coming in through Ponter, that's what just gives them that extra pizzazz. I have to say, rotation timings felt the good from the Audix side. Turtle coming in felt like he might have just made the difference, but things did, st uh, things did still start to fall apart a little bit in the middle. Yeah, Turtle's timing on his peak and just how sharp he was on that fight. Actually, I feel like that's the, the sort of MVP frag you needed yeah. out of Audix because it just made it so much easier to draw attention instead towards Dark, where the majority of Elevate were sort of set up for the hit. And now they don't wait for it. They just fully challenge Dare out early on, take him down, but the trade is good. Beeping the one to deliver. Now, Dare not being around is a problem. Shane's been much more quiet in the T side. I actually don't know if he's gotten more than a single frag. I'm not wrong. Yeah, a bit more struggles for him. More highlights been on Dare, but that's also maybe to do with the position, really. Of course. With how much Canals and Dark has been a... A, fi a focal point for both of these teams. What he's fully facing into the smoke as it will be fading if he starts to back off over here and they heard it. No, they don't. Nade behind the stairs and what he's good for one, but the trade from beeping once again to deliver. And in the meanwhile, Audic had rotated resources away. The only player nearby that's Bonter. And they've got plenty of smokes to be able to disable him from major relevance. And looking at where Bonter is rotating in from, sorry, you got the name wrong, it was Turtle in fact, but looking at where Bonter is rotating in from, this might be an early fight that Turtle tries to take or Elevate tries to push in. Elevate aren't gonna read this at all as well. Nobody's reset towards main just yet. It'll be Shane that goes out to clear it and this time Shane finds his impacts. Ponter's late lurk not pulling off. And where they felt like they could have gone aggressive, Shane instead tries to find defensive positioning. He is low though, so for him to fight, it's not easy. Peeping has to take it all away, but Shane's taken that first duel and found damage. He's doing it all. Shane and Peeping are delivering them this round. He's even put <laughs> through the smoke. How has he done this? A man who I just said was having a quiet time in that second half has come through roaring. Sometimes all you have to do is ask. Shane, I mean, even though he was instantly dinked on, on clearing out Ponter on the flank, able to find so much impact, kills through smoke, and then kept on spraying as he was coming out the smoke to mask his steps. I mean, Matios did not expect him to make that play. What was, a ballsy player to do He just that kept as well. thinking, where is this second guy? There yeah. has to be somebody else to challenge it. He has to be in towards dark, but Peeping never looked into that site. He mm. knew that Shane, because he was low, was more willing to take that risk. Peeping was security. And that's really nice to see, you know, Peeping being able to get that first trade, and I felt like that might be all we see, but then immediately afterwards, Woody's taken out as well. 
and then fully hides away. Let Shane be the one stealing the spotlight. And this is one of the problems if you're going to be MIBR. Oh God, if you're going to be Odic, getting all the names wrong. If you're going to be Odic and you're trying to rely on a consistent lurking presence from Bonter to be what activates your retakes, eventually it's just not going to work. Aggressive play though here from Odic instead. They're challenging in through middle. They go in with SMGs, shotguns, and pistols. This is a full commitment around these weapons. I know it might be their last stand, but look at how they're mitigating it. Just hitting this A bomb site. It was only Ponto that could be there to defend, and he's run down by a Mac. Snap knows there's blanks coming in from behind as well, but it doesn't feel like Odic fully want to really contest this. At the same time, containment doesn't give you much either, so the question remains. Are you going to try retaking this with two MP9s and a shotgun? A couple of kills would actually be very nice for Natty or Matty or Stefan, hell even Woody. Put yourself in a position where you can drop an M4 over. That next round won't be particularly easy either. And Matteo still playing containment, hoping to find a kill. We'll find nothing. In fact, Snav even takes down his teammate and says, you know what? You don't get that kill bonus. I get that kill bonus. Not a single frag found with any of these high-value weapons. Finally, Woody adds 900 to the tally. Yeah, MBG is one of these guys that actually played with the, the Elevate roster when they were at Fragicago. Wow. And funnily enough, is I mean, they played this map with him. So, I mean, the the idea that they... The seeds were sown a long time ago, yeah, is what you're I saying. mean, in December, they sowed My those God. seeds. My God. Elevate... 2024 vision. I mean, yeah, I can't believe that they, they've maybe <laughs> even thought that far ahead. It's all a master plan. They don't need no coach. They hung Anubis. Two maps played in three months for this Elevate roster. With a different lineup. Yeah, one of them was with a different lineup. One of them was with Deep or, or with MVG, but Hunter standing his ground past the smokes. It's pistols here for Odic, but they're finding good output once again here for Matios, who's found it into a man advantage. Snav as well, so low. And Woody's just going to be able to take this one away if Matios wasn't just so damn clean. Matios has been the consistent performer on the side of Odic and Woody <laughs> as well, finally getting involved. Elevate. Now bite into an apple that's a little bit too hard for their teeth. Ends up shattering their molars. I have to say, I have really appreciated Woody's output as well mm. in this game. You know, much just, better. Yeah, but uh, you know, not on the AWP mainly. You know, he's actually found a lot of his impact on rifles. Whether it's been you know these challenges in towards dark, some of the I mean the sight hold on A as well. I feel like he's actually put himself in great positions to find multi frags with those rifles. But when we saw him on the AWP, you know, there were a couple of times where he had almost like sitter shots. Mm. And the fact that he was able to make that transition is just, and actually just make that choice for himself to, to opt for rifles instead has to be commended. Some some players will live and die by the blade, and sometimes it, it just never recovers. Part of that might also be the difficult economical situation they're finding themselves in, but whatever the situation is, he's making the best of it. 18 and 12 right now, of course. Addy, in the meanwhile, back in dark, will not be taken down this time. No trades for you, Beepin. And where Audic was struggling, it feels like map point will still be theirs to begin with. Natty finally falls, but the trades are there, and Elevate will lose the round and their money together unless Nav can pull it all together. But in 1v5, too much to ask for, even for him. That one low buy. They had a shotgun. <laughs> they had pistols. And that's the round that seemingly brings Odic right back into the swing of things. This game was and has been close throughout. But Elevate have won some tough rounds. Odic have been on the poor end of the stick. They've been beaten down by some of these man advantages they gave up, some great site positions, post plants. Elevate have been the, the ones that have really surprised here on Anubis. But Onik have shown some great longevity, just bringing themselves out of the dumps. And even though they had terrible economics coming into one of those rounds, sometimes one round win is all you need to spark that, especially in a game so close.
You said there won't be three half by wins. Well, Elevator hoping there will. For their side, at least, there's been three in total otherwise. They need to pull something together. Util's low. Plan is simple. It's straightforward. It's a classic. Contact B and get some frags. Turtle wants to prevent that from happening. Natty only good for one, initially traded away. Turtle still blind and he's struggling in the back of the side, but those struggles are over. Dare puts him down. Advantage in the hands of Audic regardless. And the op for Woody. You mentioned he's been doing well on the rifle. Well, now on the retake, maybe not the best weapon to have, but the bomb's still not planted yet. And as it starts to go down, the CTs will be creeping forward. Dark's been fully cleared. Slav's got the M4, rifles galore for the T side, and now as they look to fight out early, the smoke will extinguish the Molotov. It's gone too deep, and Woody good for one. Slav can't get the trance for Audic. By the skin of their teeth, take it away. Wow, I mean, their map pick coming into this series, but it was a Hail Mary low buy round that really brought them back. It looked like Elevate were going to steal it. After only two maps played in the past three months, this was left hanging. It almost felt like Onyx got baited into moving into this Anubis, but I'm sure they're pleased that they were able to bring their spirits back into place.